Some nutritionists have a very simple solution for diabetics. Simply exchange your white bread for whole wheat bread, and all will be fine. But is it really that simple? Can even 100% whole wheat bread be a problem for diabetics? In the following video, I'll test my blood sugar rise after eating first a meal of four slices of whole wheat bread and then four slices of white bread. Actually, four and a half. Will there be a difference in my blood sugar spike? Will it be a little, a lot, or none? Check this out. Well, I've been looking forward to this test for some time, but I've actually been dreading it at the same time. That's a strange thing. Looking forward to it because I've never done a bread test like this, but dreading it because the last thing I want to do normally is eat this much bread. I'm going to have four slices of bread as my lunch today. And we're going to test white versus whole wheat. So many times the people that act like they know what they're talking about will tell you, just eat whole grain products and you've got no diabetic woes. Get rid of the nasty white stuff, go for the whole grain, your problems are over. But the reality is whole grain bread normally will raise your blood sugar just about as high as the white. Maybe not quite as much, but very close. And so I've never tested this. I, I base what I'm saying to you on the fact that I've done a lot of reading and read a lot of research. But this time I'm going to test it for myself, so we'll find out just how true this is. An example of some of the erroneous and the, just the messed up advice you get. I, I brought a couple of uh, little booklets that I picked up at different places. This one is um, Prevention Guide, Outsmart Diabetes. And on the label, on the cover of this little magazine, it has chocolate cake. And they've got a recipe here for chocolate cake that is 40 grams of carbohydrate. That's ridiculous. Why in the world would you put chocolate cake on the cover of a diabetes magazine and encourage people to eat it and then let them know, by the way, it's got more carbohydrate than a candy bar would. Uh, here's another example of some messed up advice. This is from the uh, a little magazine called Foods That Fight Diabetes. And they've got here a hamburger. And the hamburger they recommend, and they also show French fries with it, so apparently in their mind, a typical American hamburger and French fries is a fine meal for a diabetic, as long as you, according to them, do two things. Number one, you cut some of the ground beef and replace it with ground turkey, and then you get lower fat, which that's what they're all about, low fat. And then secondly, have a whole grain bun instead of a white bun. The reality is none of that really matters when it comes to raising your blood sugar. So anyway, what we're going to do is my lunch today is going to be four of these slices of whole grain bread, very healthy looking bread. It's got the little uh, white flakes on there, I suppose, maybe oat flakes. And uh, some people that are really into nutrition and health and they don't know very much about blood sugar might think I'm just eating a very healthy meal here. Four good slices. There's no animal fat, no saturated fat, uh, no cholesterol in this meal whatsoever. Water and four slices of whole grain bread. Uh, in a couple of days, we're going to come back and do the same thing with four slices of white bread. They're very close in carbohydrate content and we'll see the difference that it makes. But before I get started, I'm going to go test my blood sugar to see where I start. Then I'll begin with the meal and we'll come back and see after an hour, an hour after I've finished, just where it ends up. Okay, so I've just tested my blood sugar and it is at 103 right now, which is pretty much normal for me. And this bread that I'll be eating is uh, oral wheat, whole grain, 100% whole wheat, sounds healthy, looks healthy, but for diabetics and pre-diabetics, not quite <laughs> so much. So I'm going to get started with some of this marvelous toast. By the time I get done, I will have eaten four pieces, which represents around 60 grams of carbohydrate. And we'll find out just what it does to my blood sugar. 
Well, my timer is just telling me it has been an hour since I finished those four pieces of whole wheat toast. <laughs> I would never do that normally. I'm doing it for you and I guess a little bit for me just to see how whole wheat compares with white bread when it comes to carbohydrates. I drank water, which is going to add no carbs to the meal. I did have a little bit of margarine on the toast. Shouldn't make much difference. So basically we're going to compare wheat bread, whole wheat bread versus white bread. And this particular bread has about 15 grams of net carbs per slice. So four times 15 is 60. I ingested 60 grams of carbs for lunch. That's a lot by my standards. That's quite a lot, but many people will eat meals with a lot more carbs than that. And so it, I guess it all depends on your perspective, but really a diabetes has no business eating a meal with that many carbs and certainly not that much bread. So we're going to find out in about three seconds just exactly what this did to my blood sugar. And the answer is, wow, a whopping 176. Well, I can tell you that 176 is too high. Yeah, people have higher blood sugar than that, 200s, 300s, and so forth, but it's too high. And keep this in mind, I'm not even a diabetic. I'm a pre-diabetic. So if I go up to 176, someone who's a true diabetic is probably going to go well over 200. And that's just with 60 grams of whole wheat. That's whole wheat bread, folks. The thing that so many people tell you is safe and healthy and just eat as much of it as you possibly can. Of course, the test won't be complete until we come back in a couple of days and we try it with white bread and see what the difference is. If my guess is correct, there's not going to be that much difference between four slices of white versus four slices of whole wheat, but we'll find out. It'll take me a couple of days to get back, but you'll see it in about a second. Well, here we are again, and this time I've got white bread. Last time it was whole wheat bread. And I realized that in order to make the test more precise, I would need to eat a little bit more of the white toast because the white bread has 13 net grams per slice. The whole wheat had 15 net grams per slice. So in order to make up for the difference, I'm adding a little over a half a slice of toast. That means about four and a half slices of bread. Yuck. <laughs> I wouldn't even like that if I didn't have to eat low carb, let alone the fact that I know it's not going to be very good for me. But for the sake of science and for your sake and a little bit for my sake, we're going to see what, what this does and how it compares with the whole wheat bread. So. I'm going to eat this. I'm going to set this timer when I get done and we'll find out how they compare. Bon appetit. Well, my alarm is just about to go off and let me know that it's been an hour since I finished that last bread. There it is. So we'll stop it. And that means it's time to test my blood sugar and see what this white bread has done to me. Again, about four and a half slices equaling about 60 net grams of carbs. Uh, the same amount as I had before with the whole grain bread. In the last experiment, it raised my blood sugar 73 points, went from 103 to 176. What will it do this time? We're about to find out. I don't know. If I had to guess, I'd say probably a little more than that. I doubt if it does a whole lot more, but we're going to find out. So let's check it and see. And there it is. Actually, it is somewhat higher. It is at 202. And uh, that is a place I haven't seen in a long time. I did it for research. I, I surely wouldn't normally eat like that. But uh, the point we want to make here is that, yeah, the white uh, bread did raise it higher than the whole grain, but they both raised it too much. 73 points for the whole grain, uh, 202, 98 to 202, what's that? About 104 points. Now, uh, in both cases, it's too high. White bread was worse both are bad. And here's an interesting thing. I didn't feel a thing. I don't feel a thing. I feel just fine. And that's the deceptive thing about blood sugar. Your blood sugar can be going to 200, 250, 300, and you may feel great. And you may be deceiving yourself saying, hey, I, there can't be anything really wrong with me because I feel good. But all the time, you're being harmed by that high blood sugar. This would harm me significantly if I ate like this very often, and I won't. <laughs> you can believe me, I will not. Now, the point we want to make is white bread is worse. It's not as nutritious. It doesn't have as much fiber, so it's probably going to jack your blood sugar up a bit higher 
than the whole grain. But still, in both cases, you don't need the kind of blood sugar rise that they're going to give you. You may ask, do you eat bread? Yeah, I do, but I eat it sparingly, normally. <laughs> Not today, of course, but normally I'll eat about one slice of whole grain bread, maybe put some stuff on it, and the whole grain bread I use has about nine net grams of carbs, sometimes eight, as opposed to the 15 that the stuff we had the other day had. So yeah, it's, it's okay to eat bread. Bread is not evil. Jesus calls himself the bread of life, so I don't think he would call himself that if bread was something that was evil. But for those of us that have impaired blood sugar uh, uh, processing in our bodies, uh, we have to be careful. And you just can't pig out on bread, as I did today. So the 60 grams that I ingested today uh, for some people, that would be normal. For some, that would even be on the low side. But for a diabetic, uh, way too high. And I won't be doing that again soon. So I guess the takeaway from these experiments is bread is problematic for diabetics and pre-diabetics. I'm not even a diabetic uh, by the A1C scores that I get. And yet, look at what it just showed me. I, I went up to 202 by eating four and a half slices, about 60 grams of white bread. So I just can't eat bread like an, uh, a normal person could. And if you're diabetic or pre-diabetic, you can't either. So just be careful, be wise, and limit your bread. Well, that about says it all. Let me conclude by saying you really do need to be a bit discerning when it comes to some of these diabetic cookbooks. If you found the video helpful, give it a thumbs up and YouTube will promote it and more people will be able to see it. And consider subscribing and then clicking on the bell icon so that you'll be notified every time we post a new video. God bless. See you again soon.